Welcome to NASDAQ Decodes, brought to you for, uh, live from our market site studio in Times Square. I'm your host, Ryan Wells. Today we're going to talk to Quandle CEO Tamara Kennel. In 2018, Quandle was acquired by NASDAQ to complement the company's existing data and analytics business. Quandle, which has been at the forefront of the fast-growing alternative data space, has a mission to extract value from the world's data. Tamara, thank you for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Yeah. And for our LinkedIn viewers, if you have any questions during the discussion, certainly feel free to send in and we'll try to tackle during today's conversation. So uh, let's start, um, I guess, just from the top. I, uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about what Quandle is and exactly, and, and, and more or less how was it built exactly. Yeah, okay, so, so Quandle is fundamentally in the business of going out beyond the traditional boundaries of Wall Street and finding data that promises information advantages to professional investors. Mm -hmm. so let me break that down a bit. Global markets are very, very efficient. Mm -hmm. Yet information remains the fuel that differentiates um, the best investors from everybody else. Mm -hmm. Now, the, 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 the global data explosion is an old story, but a kind of a footnote to that is in this global data explosion, there are what we think of as nuggets of information gold, little pieces of information that are not priced into markets yet. Mm -hmm. So an investor empowered with that data immediately has a distinct advantage uh, in, you know, versus its competitors and versus the market as a whole, uh, empowering them to make better trading decisions and improve their, their profits. So that is fundamentally what we're in the business of doing. We're in the business of imbuing investors with information advantages. I see. So when you, so you co-founded the company with Abraham Thomas, is that right? Yeah. So what, like what, what instigated you to start the company at the time? Was there like a particular problem that you were trying to solve? Yeah, so l like so many companies, Quandle was born out of a pain point that uh, we were experiencing in our day-to-day -day work as quantitative analysts inside of a hedge fund. So that exact pain point was that, you know, we were, we were this was, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we were already uh, using data to drive investment decisions, but we found it extremely difficult to find the data we needed and get it into the system we wanted. And so Quando was born as a technology solution to this problem. Most analysts will tell you that they spend an inordinate amount of time, half their professional life, just trying to find the data they need and clean it and format it and organize it and generally beat it into shape right. so they can do the work they want to do. Uh, that's a time vampire. Right. So Quando was originally built to uh, go after that. And so today, that technology platform is still at the heart of Quandle. We are, we pride ourselves on making it possible for a, anyone actually to go from needing data mm -hmm. to having it in the system they want essentially instantly. And today, while we have sort of expanded from that to include alternative data on the platform, we still have thousands of customers who use Quandle data not because our, a particular data set is unique, but because Quandle is uh, offering them really a delightful data consumption experience. It just makes it so easy for them to do their job uh, more effectively and more efficiently. So that's where it was born, and uh, it's come, you know, it's come now eight, nine years later, and we're, uh, we're still doing that. Okay, so uh, at a very, very basic level, what, can you explain to us a little bit about what exactly is alternative data versus just, say, traditional data? Like, what, what would, how would you explain that? Sure. I, I mean, the, 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 the adjective alternative is, is somewhat arbitrary, and it's somewhat um, overused today, but the, the, when people started using this, this term, they were trying to differentiate data that, that was kind of not traditionally used by investors, right? So, you know, traditionally investors use, you know, price information, volume information, fundamentals, data, earnings estimates. Uh, I call it the usual suspects. It's the uh -huh. data that drives Wall Street on a day-to-day -day basis, the data, you'll, you know, that, that makes news. Um, but alternative data is, you know, is data that, you know, is not, you know, typically on the Bloomberg terminal, for example, right? right. Um, now, what's happened though is that alternative data has become, so, you know, kind of a you know, popular concept or, 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 or idea, 
And now the label is being applied rather liberally to anything, almost as a marketing strategy. Yeah. So we, we don't actually use the term alternative data ourselves that much anymore. I mean, da it's data, right? right it's right. data. And for us, we're interested in data that helps our customers uh, make better investment decisions. You can call it alternative data. You can call it data. We're not sure. arose by any other name. I got gotcha. you. So I guess in terms of like how you develop a, pro a data product like, or, the, or data set, how do you come up with that a little? Yeah, so that's a process, right? Um, there is a lot of data in the world, right? Like, where, you know, zettabytes, or I don't know what they're counting it in now, but there's a lot, and we yep. see a lot of that. And so we put that data through a process, and the truth is most data, the 95% like to 98% of the data we see is, is impotent. Yep. It, doesn't, it doesn't have information that can well and truly put an investor at an advantage. So our job is to process that data uh, and find the gold nuggets I was talking about. Find that two to three percent of data that actually has information value. And that's a process, um, it's processes people and technology at Quantle. Uh, data comes through our doors, it goes through sort of a triage process. We try to quickly and efficiently uh, certainly eliminate data that, that doesn't hold promise. Right. Um, when we, when, once we've got it through that triage process and we have uh, data sets that, that, that at least you know, have some potential, then we, we go on to, to, to use kind of rigorous statistical methods to figure out, okay, just how predictive is this data? You get into some diligence matters to, you know, where, where's this data coming from? Is it reliable? Will it update frequently? Does the person, the organization that has the data, do they have the rights to that data? We have to navigate more and more regulations around data. Um, so we have to get all that right, right. Um, which again will, and some things will drop out as a result of that, right? But hopefully, you know, out of 100 data sets we see at the beginning, mm -hmm. one, and if we're lucky, two of them get all the way to the other end and we can start bringing them to customers. Uh, and, only, and then, of course, the customers, our customers are the ultimate arbitrator of how much value we're, we're, we're bringing them, yeah. right? Uh, and, you know, that's how kind of how a how a raw data set becomes a quantal product, is sure. that process. I see, interesting. So I, it was a, I guess a couple of weeks ago you had uh, your, the quantal data conference uh, that you, you put on. Uh, would you, what, like, just give us a taste of sort of the main kind of key themes, takeaways that you guys came, For sure. came from yep. that, yeah. Yeah, so that, this, was, this is the fourth year we've done the conference. And we, we've, we, you know, we do this conference essentially for the benefit of our customers, mm -hmm. right? To help our customers stay on top of trends and developments and challenges and or find solutions to challenges right. um, that they're having. So our conference is a little different from most industry conferences because it's, it's really carefully curated, right? This is, we don't do this conference as a, as a money-making exercise, so we don't, you can't just speak at our conference because you're writing us a check. Most conferences are kind of right. for-profit exercises. But what that liberates us to do is go out and find exceptional people mm -hmm. and invite them to speak, or sometimes coerce them to speak. Right. But, but we, you know, and, and so our conference is about, we put about a dozen people on the stage throughout the day, um, and they're, you know, they're people at the forefront of data-driven investing. Um, and they're there to help our customers and, of course, our guests um, get better at using data to make investment decisions. This year, the prevailing theme of the conference was, was, was quantity. Mm -hmm. So data, as I was just alluding to, um, finding value in data is a needle in a haystack kind of problem, right? And we're living in a world now where that haystack keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, um, perhaps faster than the number of needles that are being uh, discovered in it. So it's becoming the, f the fundamental problem for, for data-driven investing today is how do you work through this glut of data right. and find your way to those few data sets that can actually help you as an investor make better, better trading decisions. So that was a theme that was explored throughout the conference. And we think it was a super successful event. Again, yeah. yeah. Good. So I guess just looking broadly at the market ecosystem, like where do you see potentially sort of the next generation of, of users of, of quantal data? Where, the, where, where, where would you spot those folks at? So if we, if we, if we look at you know, where data-driven investing has come from, we can, we can use that to see where it's going. Mm -hmm. um, the early adopters um, for the data that Quandl had for sale, the alternative data that, that, that we offered, were quantitative and systematic asset managers. And the reason for that is because they were 
already in the business of using data right. systematically to make uh, trading decisions. Mm -hmm. And of course, what they continually demonstrate is that that works, right? If you, if you let the data lead you, it'll take you uh, to the right trading decision. So what is happening in the industry today is there is uh, an evolution taking place or, or, or maybe even a metamorphosis as more and more non-quantitative investors, which who is the majority of, of asset managers are not quantitative in their approaches, um, they are learning to leverage data. And they're, in, they're introducing uh, data-driven decision-making into their processes. And so that's where this is going, okay. right? Every, every month, every quarter, we add customers um, at Quandle who you know, are not quantitative in nature, but have now evolved their, uh, their trading paradigms to be able to uh, leverage data to make better uh, trading decisions. So that's where, you know, that's where I, I, I see everything going. I see. Well, okay, so here's one other area. Like, like, what about like, the world of corporates? Like, would you see them, like how, would, how, would, how could they potentially use, like, like could a corporation use you know, Quandle, and how are they different than say the buy side? Yeah, good, good question. Um, so look, data-driven uh, decision-making is not something that is unique to the investment world. The best businesses in the world are certainly leveraging data to make better decisions, uh, whether it's about developing a product or a marketing strategy or an expansion strategy. So um, there's no question that the, the, the type of data that we're offering has an application in the corporate world. Of course, our expertise has historically been uh, financial in nature, but what we're discovering is that our data products, um, in more or less the form we package them in for professional investors, right. are applicable to you know as business intelligence solutions mm -hmm. uh, for corporations, and so that's a, that's a, uh, a new and growing customer base for us, and right. we would we fully expect that to continue to grow. I see. So I, just looking ahead, uh, can you give us a little bit of a taste of this and some new again, areas of, of data that you guys are looking to potentially offer? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're, of course, always, well, hopefully always discovering new kinds of data and, and, uh, and bringing it to our customers. The two newest things that we have that are interesting is uh, we have one new product. We call it our uh, medical billing uh, insights. Okay. This is a data set that is derived um, from uh, hospital billing data. So we have a technology partner that, that provides infrastructure to hospitals to manage their billing. Mm -hmm. Now, we see that data in a completely, totally anonymized form, of course. Um, so there's like privacy, the kind of, the, yeah. An intense privacy. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we, and of course, we're not interested, we're not the least bit interested in what any one individual is doing at a hospital. What we're interested in is what drugs are that what drugs are the hospital prescri prescribing? Right. And what medical equipment is that hospital using? And we're interested that interested in that in the aggregate, mm -hmm. right? So we use this data to, to measure how how often is a particular uh, pharmaceutical being prescribed? How often is this particular kind of hip replacement device being used? And we count those numbers. And of course, there are so many um, companies in this space whose bottom line is dependent on one or two drugs or one or two products. And so this data allows you to get a measurement of the success or lack of success of a particular product or, or pharmaceutical. Um, and that's, so that data set is proving really powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so that's one we brought to market this year. Okay. And uh, late last year, we brought our e-commerce insights data set okay. uh, to market. So this is a, a data set where, again, we're part partnered with a company that provides technology to e-tailers. And as a byproduct of that, we can see what products are selling on that platform. Again, totally anonymized. We're not, not least bit interested in what you're buying. Right. I, I'm interested in how many units of a particular product are being sold uh, globally. And of course, uh, the application of that is obvious. So um, yeah, so that's two, two, two new exciting products. And there's a couple more coming in Q2. That will that's excellent. All right, great. Well, well, well thank you, uh, Tamara, for talking with us today. Really appreciate it. Uh, so uh, that's all we have today for NASDAQ Decodes. Uh, be sure to follow uh, NASDAQ's page for updates uh, on our feed. And I'm Ryan Wells, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.